What you are watching is the avian equivalent of John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever. This wiretail mannequin is dancing to delight and attract females. But what makes male mannequins so unique is they actually cooperate with other males. Yes, they are one another's wingmen, if you will, to lure the fairer sex. In the Darwinian world where only the fittest survive, we might ask ourselves, why would a species cooperate? Why would birds engage in social networking? It is these very questions that have driven my 10-year fascination with this species. My name is Brant Ryder, and I'm a research ecologist here to ask for your help in advancing our understanding of animal social behavior. The research I'd like to tell you about today, ironically, is not only using my social network to help raise funds, but it also focuses on the social networks of animals. Social behavior is the foundation of all animal societies, including our own. Each day, animals interact in a variety of ways, and those interactions are the yarn that knits our social networks together. Understanding the mechanisms that maintain cooperative interactions in complex social groups remains a key conceptual focus of evolutionary biology. My research has begun trying to understand these mechanisms, how they influence social behaviors, and how those behaviors in turn influence social networks. Imagine yourself in a room full of strangers and ask yourself how individual behaviors might influence the resulting interactions and the potential future friendships that might form. Amazingly, not only can our behaviors influence our social networks, but those social interactions can feed back, having profound influence on our future behaviors and actions. The question becomes, is there something physiological that drives behavior, influences our social networks, and even our measures of success? Hormones and their actions have long been linked to animal social behavior, and while hormones are not deterministic in action, they can and often do mediate the expression of certain kinds of behavior. Two stereotypical human examples include how a woman's moods and behaviors change during menstruation, and the testosterone-laden aggression we observe when men battle it out on the sports field. So today, I'm asking for your help to begin understanding how hormones influence mannequin cooperative behavior and how those interactions influence the structure of social networks. Your donations would be put towards traveling to the remote Amazonian jungles of central Ecuador to capture and mark male mannequins, take hormone samples, and place small radio tags on individuals to remotely quantify social networks. As many of you are likely aware, the science funding in the U.S. has drastically declined over the past 10 years, making funding for even sound research ideas exceedingly difficult. The Petri dish model provides a non-traditional outlet for young up-and-coming scientists like myself to draw upon social media as an outlet for fundraising. This model is particularly valuable for funding preliminary research and data that can be used to strengthen grant proposals and increase the likelihood of funding at more traditional outlets, such as National Science Foundation. By funding my research, we can begin to unlock the mysteries of how social networks shape our behaviors, influence our productivity, and determine our probability of success. Thanks for your time and potential contributions. Hi, I'm Brant Ryder and I want to personally thank you for taking the time to watch the video. I certainly hope your funds will help contribute to this important research.